Oh, hey folks, how you doing there? Um, messing with uh, one of my K bars here, and this one actually happens to be a Camillus or Camillus, depending on how you pronounce it. But obviously, it's from uh, New York State, USA, and uh, well, it's obviously a K bar knife. Uh, let me refer you back to the question I got from NDG Reed, Nancy David Golf, Hell Sing, like you're singing in hell. Hey, I love everything you do, and I was wondering if you could make a knife blog video on the K-Bar Survival Knife. My dad used one in Desert Storm, and I wanted to know more about it. Uh, what do you think is a good pocket knife? Well, you know what? L let's just do this thing from back to front. <clears throat> from back to front, the ultimate pocket knife, I'm going to say most expressly, is always going to be the Swiss Army Knife, okay? I, I, I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of the Swiss Army Knife. It is the ultimate pocket toolbox. You can get them in lock blade. So, you know, there's no question about it. I will always say expressly, go to the Swiss Army Knife for a pocket knife. Now, there's other good stuff out there. Um, all the major names and what have you. I prefer the Swiss Army Knife. That's just me. Now, in terms of what he was asking about, he was asking about the classic, which is what this one actually is, the classic K-Bar combat knife, also known... In 1942 iterations as the 1219 C Charlie 2 combat knife. So 1219 C 2 combat knife. Later designated the USMC Mark II combat knife or knife, comma, fighting utility. And was subsequently adopted by the United States Navy as a Navy utility knife Mark II. Additionally, the K-Bar is trademark and namesake the related knife company manufacturing and known as K-Bar Knives, formerly Union Cutlery of Olean, New York, a subsidy of Cutco Corporation. Now, classically, you will see these things in all the various iterations, this one being like, you know, one of the more plain Jane varieties. It is a used piece that I happen to come across. Uh, unfortunately for me, it's sat in the... When I had it, my Corolla, it sat in like one of the side trunk areas, you know, where like the vent is and all kinds of moisture always collects. So it, it's a little moldy. It's a little rusty. And I'm in the process of rehabbing this thing and get it back to fighting shape. Now the classic iteration of a K-Bar knife, let me get back over here to view to where I'm actually like looking at my camera again. Now, the classic iteration of a K-Bar, and let me see if I can't focus this thing up a little bit. You guys see that there is a scalloped false edge on it. There is a prominent floor groove. Also, it is a flat grind. It is a very, very basic knife blade. Now, the kicker is this thing is actually made in such an iteration and such a way of making it that they intended it to be the standard Marine Corps style knife of, you know, good execution. Classically, the knife blade length is 7 inches. Overall weight with seath is about a pound, 0.23 pounds or 0.56 kilograms, it is a phenomenally good fighting knife. It is very, very good in that regard. Now, in terms of actually what the thing is actually constructed of, now, you can ask anybody, I am not a fan of leather anything in terms of web gear. Why? Well, because first thing that has happened is it's leather, okay? You expose it to the elements. Let me get back over here to focus again. Sorry about that, folks. You go out in the field, things go really, really long, your stuff gets wet, you have to, you know, take care of the sheath, which then got wet, and you can see this thing's like, you know, just really funked out and nastified because of stuff, and I literally have been dumping on, and I hate playing with this stuff, okay? I mean, I, I really don't mind it per se because it's really not that odorific, but still, playing with a bottle of squirrel juice, <sighs> squirrel juice, to have to make your leather look good is a... P-I-T-A, or a pain in the ass. It is another step that makes it more trouble than it's worth. Now, construction on the classic K-Bar is going to be, it is 1095 steel. It is a very good carbon steel. It is hardened up. It's not really ductile, but it is hell for stout. It does not bend or break easy, but when it does break, it shatters, okay? It is not a knife that you basically use nicely. You use it to hell and back, but when it gives up, it breaks catastrophically. It is a very strong knife. You can take this thing, stick it underneath the strapping. You can cut the strapping on your packages and your uh, all your stuff, your crates and what have you when you're overseas basically fighting in the theaters. It's intended to do that. But the classic instruction on this thing is as such. You have a thin piece of steel running down the middle. These are leather washers, okay? If you can see some detail, let me move the squirrel juice. 
if you can see some detail, hopefully I can get a little closer here. You see how there's like little lines between each one of the fatter lines that give you some grip? There's actually little lines here because there is like 50 or 40 or 30 or however many it takes leather washers that are then stacked with a square hole in the middle on the handle tang. Now what happens next is you have the butt cap and you'll see right there there's that pin. There's a cross pin that's driven through and pinned in place so it keeps the butt cap on here. It is a very very prominent butt cap. Let me go back to focus here. It is a very prominent butt cap, okay? If you're engaging somebody and you're really going hell for stout, man, the only thing you really have to worry about is overriding the guard and tearing yourself up. The guard is not really thick, okay? Let me jump in a little bit closer here, you guys, because you don't talk about. It is a not very, very thick guard, okay? It is maybe, maybe a few sixteenths. It's not even an eighth of an inch. It is very thin, but it is good steel, so it's not going to bend easy. Now, the kicker is, of course, the classic iteration of these things is you wish to fight. They always teach you in the Marine Corps, you always fight edge in. You never fight edge out, because that looks like you don't know what the hell you're doing. If you're edge in and you're engaging the guy, he comes at you, that's huck. That's, that's hack and cut. That's block. You always are taught to fight edge in. Also, you have this false edge. Even though it's not the sharpest false edge and you can touch it up, you pop somebody with that thing. It's also known as a whip strike. You whip strike somebody with the point of a K-bar, they're going to be bleeding, okay? Basically, they're coming at you, you do a quick flick at their face, cut a cheek, they're bleeding. You cut their forehead, you get blood into their eyes. That is some of the stuff they teach you in how to fight with knives. The first thing they teach you on how to fight with knives in the Marine Corps is they say, do not fight with knives. You're going to get tore up. Somebody's going to F you up bad, man. Because if you cut him, he's going to cut you back. Because within distance of cutting him, you're in distance for him cutting you. You're going to get effed up, okay? You are not going to walk away from a knife fight without getting a couple slashes on you. That's just not going to have happen. Don't engage somebody in a knife fight if you can do it. Always pick your theater of fight. You pick the fight, not them. If they're picking the fight, you're then trying to figure out how to defend yourself. If you're picking the fight, they're going, oh crap, this guy's coming at me. Uh, now what? Pick the fight. Don't let them pick the fight. If they pick the fight, you then have to figure out how to get back out of the fight. And don't get in a knife fight. You're going to get tore up bad. Now, this is the classic iteration of the standard K-Bar, the Marine Corps K-Bar, USMC K-Bar. I can't say that enough times. I'm just kind of, you know... I'm kind of happy to say Marine Corps K-Bar because they are just that good a knife. Now, in terms of actually what they are in modern iterations, there is, of course, I have the modern iteration, which is going to be the Cold Steel version. Now, the Cold Steel is actually made in Taiwan, okay? So it is not American knife. But comparing the two side by side, you see they are a very, very close thing, except they have a more of a buoy style grind on the blade versus this one, which was pretty much, you know, you know, low speed, no drag, pretty much just a straight line except for the clip point. This one really has a very slightly relieved clip point. This one has a very, very prominent false edge. This one, in terms of what it's actually made out to do, is more of a buoy than a K-bar. That said, this one actually has more mass than this one. The downside is more mass means crap you got to carry when you're not using it. But on the plus side of things, it is a synthetic handle. It is a synthetic handle sheath. So for all intents and purposes, this thing's going to require a lot less work, even though it's still a carbon steel blade. Taiwanese make nice stuff. They also refer to this one as the leather neck. This is the cold steel leather neck. But this one, of course, being the K-Bar. You know what? Let me see if I can actually get like a zoom in and show you guys like the script on this thing. I, mean, I know it's a little crusty, a little rusty, what have you, but let me at least try to show you guys Hopefully you're kind of seeing it. Let me kick a little light in here. There you go. You're seeing it. So, Camelus, New York, USA. And there is, you know, the, the, the several ways of pronouncing it. You could say Camillus or Camelus. I've heard it both ways. Personally, I tend to think it's more Camelus or Camillus. <laughs> Whatever. But in terms of actual iterations... This would be your classic. This would be your next, you know, next best. And then, of course, you have the other versions, which would be pretty much like Randall. Playing with knives here. <laughs> yes, I'm playing with knives. Uh, and now, the thing about it is, is Randall has done a modern iteration where they've done something that's fairly close, but it is 
their own thing. The nice thing about Randall is they are one of the few companies around that still forges their stainless. Still handmade, still low production. They only make a certain amount of knives per year. I think they make like 30,000 knives per year, and that is it. It. That, that's, that's it. 30,000 knives a year, $4 million a year. They're happy with that monetary level. Did they basically get more people in to make more knives? Pretty much no. They make their 30,000 knives per year, and that's it. If you have a Randall of any iteration, you got a rarity, you got something kind of cool. Now, the cool part about it is, is, you know, it is a very, very basic knife. I mean, you basically have one snap up top. You have a standard sheath, nothing crazy there. But you do also have a tie-down slash drain hole for the water to run out. Marines are supposed to be amphibious, but you know what? For all intents and purposes, the K-Bar as a leather-constructed knife really is not the most amphibious. But the government's giving it to you, so if you break it, rust it, tear it up, or, you know, snap it in half and some Japanese guy in World War II, they just give you another one. I think uh, pretty much that's all that he said about that one. I'm going to bring up on this one, folks. Eco, keep the thundering as always, always. And, of course, I really wish to thank NDG Helsing for requesting this knife blog. But this one's going to be the K-Bar World War II USMC K-Bar knife. Also known as your standard fighting guy of the Marine Corps of World War II. Also known as the USMC Mark II combat knife. The U.S. Navy Utility Knife Mark II. Yeah, they really tend to like that Mark II thing. You know, it's pretty much, you know, what it is. Now, I'm going to break up on this one, folks. But, you know, these are kind of cool knives. If you do actually happen to get one of these, there is many, many varieties, okay? The thing about it is, is the iterations of these things that look valuable to not valuable is very minor script and history. The ones that are valuable, trust me, are not cheap. The ones that are pretty much podunk fun them anywhere... They tend to be a lot less, but you will not find one of these things for under 60 bucks, okay? That's just that's just not going to have happen, but they are a very good field knife. Personally, they're one of my favorites, and I rather do like them. I'm going to break up on this one, folks. Eco, keep it turning. It's always, always, you know it, you love it. K-Bar goodness. Mm -mm. See you guys.